So I think the first point is you want to measure something which is a meaningful journey in the system and not a sort of abstract metric. So we think in terms of things like balance inquiries, fund movements, but we see a lot of performance reports out there where the headline figure is something like transactions, and that turns out to be a database transaction um, or APIs, which is kind of poorly defined. So the issue with that is it doesn't really tell you how the system behaves. You don't know how many database transactions are required to move funds. Um, so I think for us, when we're thinking about a test, it's three things. It's, it's first of all that, it's let's have a, a user journey that makes sense to the stakeholders. Um, secondly, what is the metric that measures what's actually important, which can vary. So for online traffic, it's how many requests can we sustain within a certain target response rates, but something like end of day or batch job, it's just duration, it's time that we care about. And the third is a sensible target. So you know, online traffic, what's the Visa network doing on Black Friday, that kind of thing. Um, and if you have all of those three, it's a good test. Yeah, another, so we, we don't just focus on making things fast, not fast numbers. We actually have a performance framework where we take three things into consideration. So having fast numbers, obviously very important. If it doesn't go fast enough to process the traffic, it won't work. We also take the efficiency and elasticity of the system into consideration. So you don't want to have to completely over-provision everything you do to handle your peak traffic when 23 hours of the day, you don't do that traffic at all. And you also, especially with the ESG requirements on banks, you also don't want to be burning lots of uh, energy on things that you aren't using. And then finally, we worry about the predictability of the system. So how you do not want one day, your end of day process to take 30 minutes, and then the second day it takes two and a half hours with no explanation in between. People need to be predictable in the way the system works, and so they can plan their whole day around this. And so a large part of our testing is optimizing all three aspects at once, not trying to push any single dimension as far as it, as it can go. A lot of vendors in our industry take performance reporting as a marketing tool. And so what that means is they effectively try to produce the lowest possible numbers for things like latency and the highest possible numbers for things like throughput to the point where the results that we see are ludicrous. I mean, sometimes they're talking about sub two millisecond times to write data when you know that none of the databases available could ever provide that on a cloud provider. And so what they're trying to do is fool their own prospective customers, but we don't believe people are that easily fooled. And so we believe that the performance reporting should be one that customers can take to the bank, so to speak, and rely upon the production system running in the way that we claim. And because of this, I think, prevalence of uh, misreporting, customers naturally want to check these numbers straight away. So they always run performance tests to verify the system. And I think that's where a lot of this comes unstuck for people. Yeah, so it's, it's a self-defeating path to try and do that, to present these numbers, which are primarily for marketing, but they're based on a sort of lab condition exercise um, that you can never replicate yourself. So our philosophy is every test runs as it would in production, for production setup, real database. All data is replicated across three availability zones, which is an absolute hard requirement if you were to actually run a bank. Um, we don't turn off any of the features, which I think a lot of vendors would be tempted to do, things like restriction checks, you know, balance checks for postings, even fund movements. Um, the principle is, if you see it in our benchmarks, then you can replicate it in production. And ultimately, it's better for us because we know what the system does. It's better for the clients as well. So our system is a bit unique because um, we do not specify the financial products that will run. And so therefore, we don't control all the behavior that's in the system. So one of the biggest challenges for us is how to have a completely general purpose system to run any financial product that the bank would like, but also to make it fast enough to run at the sort of cutting edge, so exceeding mainframe performance in most cases. And, and so with that in mind, a bank can try to fetch a year of transactions or a day of transactions when they're running their their uh, performance test and their real life product. And we need to make sure that whatever they're trying to do within reason, the system supports it to the numbers that we claim. And so that, that level of complete flexibility in the customer's control is what makes it so hard for us to test this. It, it, it's much better, it's much easier to write a high performance system when you can hard code everything it does, cache everything it might fetch, and know in advance all its behavior. And so we're, we're trying to sort of solve, to balance those two trade-offs of complete flexibility and a very high performance system. Yeah, and I, I guess following on from that, the flexibility in terms of the way the product can run is also a tricky one for us because the challenge is to try and collapse all these permutations uh, and combinations down into some kind of sensible number of tests. So we're obviously cloud agnostic. We would typically want to run every test on 
AWS, GCP, and Azure at minimum. Um, within that, you obviously have different database options. You have Alloy, Aurora, Cloud SQL, RDS. Um, very quickly, even with just a couple of dimensions, you can find you're running every test five times. You add another dimension like the bank size, now it's 15, uh, and you can kind of easily see how this explodes. So the challenge in terms of the flexibility there, combined with the flexibility you're talking about, is what set of tests can we run that are kind of sensible archetypes where although they may not exactly match what the client is doing, there will always be some run of tests which we can point to and say, this maps very, very closely to what you have and it'll give you a very good signal on what you can expect. Well, a large part of a bank's day is waiting for systems to complete tasks. So obviously, the faster the system is, the more throughput it can do, the, the faster that a lot of the activities itself in the bank can do. So we mentioned, Adam mentioned earlier that our performance journeys are like end of day. We try to measure things that the bank actually cares about. So we measure the duration that process will take them to run, not simply how many accounts we can do at any one time. And so one of our customers has seen their end of day statement income down from 20 hours to nine minutes. I mean, it's a, so that frees up a lot more time for the operations people in a bank and also a lot more peace of mind that even if they need to delay the process or do something it is in a very narrow and controllable window and they're not trying to manage a very brittle ta series of long-running tasks which is obviously very uh it's complex from a people point of view and expensive from pe people's time so i think the key thing is peace of mind and not just on a sort of day-to-day -day basis which is what we often think about if the system isn't performant enough we worry that maybe payments will time out or end of day will take too long but the other side to that is peace of mind over decades, potentially, which is how long the kind of incumbent technology can live in a bank. We need to hold ourselves to the same standard. And what that means is, as the business develops, including in ways which they couldn't anticipate now, they expand into different business lines, or they grow vertically, or they merge, or they get acquired or acquire. Um, the core has been tested comprehensively on every axis to make sure it will perform. And that can include things like, you know, we see buy now, pay later as a, a sort of modern-ish trend. Um, what that means is a journey which was traditionally very, you know, non, uh, non-heavy in performance requirements, like opening an account, is suddenly very different. So in the old days, you open a bank account, you go sit in a room, you fill out forms, the whole thing takes hours. Um, but now with buy now, pay later, you're opening these mini loans at point of sale, potentially, you know, a second or less uh, response time is required for that. So not something you could ever predict in advance in the 80s or the 90s when you're building a mainframe. But as we build our system now, we know that it needs to be flexible. It needs to handle all this stuff.